I've often said there are two things you need to be able to communicate to be effective in personal evangelism. God's story, the basic gospel, maybe the, the story flow of scripture, and your story. You need to be able to explain what God has done and wants to do for everyone and what God has done and is doing for you. And that's where your story, what we often call your testimony, that's where it comes in. Now, over the last few years of 12 Church, we've done a whole bunch of micro trainings in personal evangelism, and several of them have to do with preparing your story and, and how to share the story about how you came to faith and where you're at now and the different hooks in your story and, and all of those kinds of things. And so what I've done for this module, I pulled together some of those pre-existed trainings and put them together in a, in a logical order. And you can now watch them as, as one training piece by piece. And as you go through that, maybe take a few notes and prepare to share your story. Ultimately, the application of this is what I want you to do, encourage you to do, is write out your story based on the guidelines you're about to see in a way that would take about three minutes to share. Just think through and write it down in a way that would be understandable for someone who doesn't know the Lord, who doesn't have a church background. Very few people can do this without preparation. But once you've wrestled it through and thought it through and written it out, it'll be locked in. And if you have a clear three-minute story, the nature of it is that you can probably share it in conversation over 30 minutes, over multiple conversations, and if necessary, 30 seconds as you ride an elevator somewhere. So watch these next little trainings, and then when you're done, take some time to begin to draft your three-minute story. Here's a brief training on telling your story. There's more complete training on this in the larger personal evangelism crash course and expanded courses. Basically, telling your story is telling the answer to the question, what has Jesus done for you? How has he done it? What is he up to in your life now? We call this your testimony, but it's really important to understand it's really the story of God's work in your life, not just necessarily your salvation story. Very simple outline. We talk about the before, and before you came to faith or before you got on track with the Lord. Perhaps the heart of your testimony is actually coming back to faith or coming back on track with the Lord as it is in my case. How that happened, and that is a natural point at which you can share snippets of the gospel, key Bible verses, key gospel principles, and then what's happened since, and even what has got up to now in your life. What's your current mindset and orientation as it relates to life because of what God has done in you and through you? It's important that there's something current, that God is actually up to something in your life now, that you have a living relationship with him, because that's what we're calling people into. You know, Jesus has to be real to you. We're called to be witnesses of his resurrection. There should be some evidence in our lives that Jesus is alive and that we actually believe he's alive. And if that's the case, he is the most important person. And so that should show up in our lives, should show up in our story. Every person's story has what I call multiple potential hooks. And that is aspects of your story that will naturally interface with, intersect with the stories of those you're telling your story to. And the reason this is the case is because we are all human and we have similar stories. And whether there is a case in your life where you were fearful, where you were lacking purpose, where you had relationship problems, and if that's a part of your story of getting on track with the Lord and the Lord's work in your life, either in the before or the how or the after or the present, then that's something you put into your story depending who and when you're telling your story. But it's just important to be aware of that, that there's things that were gaps in your life that are gaps in the lives of those you're telling your story to, that as you share that, there will be a relevance to the gospel seen by the person you're sharing with. In fact, it can be a helpful exercise to just do a list of all the potential hooks in your story, all the different things that the gospel, the person of Jesus Christ, the work of the Spirit, the Word of God has addressed in your life. I encourage people to have their story in a form in which they can tell it in, you know, three sentences slash 30 seconds, somewhere in there, or three minutes or 30 minutes. And there's the same basic outline. It just comes down to more details that'll be shared. And you might just have a short moment to share it with someone, or it might be part of a longer conversation, a multiple meeting conversation with a friend where they hear bits and pieces of your story and through it all, 
hear the gospel of what God has done and is up to. So take some time and just draft an outline of the before and the how you got on track or came to faith and the after what God is up to now. At least write out some bullet points. Maybe speak out 30 seconds and then three minutes and then think through how you tell it in a larger version. This takes some work, but that should be no surprise because this is a rather important task. We need to know what Jesus Christ has done for everyone, what he has done for us. And then we are quite equipped in the content side of things in sharing the gospel and being disciples who make disciples at the front end, what we call personal evangelism. Last week, we did an interesting little exercise in our 12 church group. At least I, I thought it was interesting. I'm not sure what the group thought, but I thought it was interesting. Had to do with telling our story. And we focused on the before aspect of the story and focused in on the hooks that are in our story. Now, basically your story is the story of your, your spiritual journey, particularly how you came to faith with the gospel woven in. It really goes from, from basically before you came to faith, how you came to faith, and now what's going on in your faith. So we focused on the before. And before you came to faith, what was going on in your life? Hooks are things in your experience that helped bring you to faith that other people could easily relate to. For instance, when I came to faith as a, as a small child, you know, elementary age kid, my thing was purely fear of death with, of course, the fear of the rapture and being left behind thrown in as well because of, you know, the thief in the night movie and all those kind of things. But it was really fear of death. When I got back on track with the Lord when I was 20, it had to do with life satisfaction and life purpose where, where I was doing all these things that should have made me happy, just a great life, great freedom, but I was miserable. And I realized the reason I was miserable was because of this disconnect between what I most deeply believed, uh, you know, about God and creation. I, I believed it all, but I wasn't living it out. And so there was this disconnect with my creator. When we talked in our group, other people's uh, befores had to do with, you know, a sense of emptiness or worry or you know, not fitting in or other things like that, that people can relate to. So for this little micro training, think about your before story, before you came to faith, what was going on in your life? What was a little bit out of sorts that helped bring you to faith? That in sharing your story with someone might be relatable to them and begin to pull them into your story and ultimately the gospel story. We've been doing some training on telling your story, talking about the before and the how and the now. Just a, a half step behind that, I've been going through in the Everyday Disciple, uh, Disciple Making Incubator with Cesar Kalinowski, his training on telling your story. And he uses an outline of creation, fall, redemption, and recreation slash restoration. What he does really, he, he follows God's story in the structuring of your story. It's a very interesting, powerful way to do it. Really two of his steps would kind of overlap with our before step. He talks about creation and the fall and really how that, how that shows up in your life. I still personally prefer the before, how now, just from a memorable standpoint, but there's some wisdom in this creation, fall, uh, redemption, restoration in, in that it parallels God's story. But what I wanna say is, as you think about your how, you might want to think about those two aspects of, of creation and fall in your how. And here's, here's the questions you ask to kind of round out your thinking about your how. What most shaped who you thought you were and where you got your identity, your values from? What were the shaping factors in your life? So again, this is not just your spiritual life, but maybe your life as a whole, as you round out your story. And then what was your relationship with God like? What was your relationship with, with others like? What was broken in that? And that's a, another part of your before. You can see that this kind of overlaps or intersects with how we talk about the before, where we talk about your before story, where you're at, and some of the hooks, some of the things going on in your life that were gaps and lacks that other people might identify with as you tell your story. So if you're having some trouble with your before, think about those kinds of questions, about your identity, values, your relationships with God and with others, and kind of round out your before, always thinking about how people you're telling your story to might relate to that, and then move on into your how you came to faith and what's going on 
now. In the last Evangelism Micro Training, we talked about the before segment of the before, how, now progression, talking about where, you, where were you at before you came to faith and what were the factors in your life that were leading to faith that people can relate to, whether it was, you know, in my case, fear of death or others worry or things like that. That's the, the before. So we move into the, the how, the how you came to faith, regardless of what the details are. I went forward in a Bible camp. When I came back to the Lord later in life, I wrestled through, I was reading the Bible and praying and, and had this strange, you know, very subjective kind of conviction over a long period of time. Other people may meet with someone and, you know, pray a prayer or get baptized or whatever. Regardless of what the detail of what actually happened is, the important part of sharing your, your how is that the gospel shows up there. Because the gospel, if you have a how, the gospel was present. So for me, you know, as an early elementary student, I went forward at a Bible camp. I came to understand, the way I describe it is, that Jesus didn't just die, he died for me. That when it says God so loved the world, he gave a son, it meant God loves me. And that Jesus died for me, that, that he paid the price, not just in general sense for bad things, but he died in my place to pay the price for my sins. That's what I understood at that time as a young child. And I'd heard it, but it really came clear to me at that point that it really applied to me. So that's the how. And, and you know, I could tell it much smoother than that, but the gospel is contained in there. And then you can share, you know, what you did as a result of that. In my case, it's a little bit of an unusual story. I went forward at this Bible camp and got chased away from the front of the camp by my uncle and grandfather who ran the camp because they thought I and my cousin who came forward with me uh, were trying to cause trouble. And that actually leads to another part of my my house story where I realized sometime later reading the Bible that Jesus says, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And I realized that Jesus didn't drive me away, that when I came to him uh, sincerely and simply, he received me even as I was seeking to receive him. And so you can see there's so many overlaps and hooks and the gospel is so so contained in that little segment of my story as a, as a little child. And so that'll be the same for your how. You know, what actually happened, the, the, the mechanics of what happened, and also what was going on conceptually as far as how is the gospel coming into play. Ideally, we don't want to, you know, overdo it, but ideally if the concepts of repentance and faith show up, sorrow for our sins, that's helpful. Uh, don't shoehorn something in that wasn't there because sometimes our how is a little less, we don't understand the gospel is as deeply as maybe we do now. So don't shoehorn in concepts that were completely absent from that. Just be honest. Tell your story because your story is still ongoing. And from that moment of that how, moment of initial response, things have happened in your life that you can also share along the way. In my case, again, I can share when I went forward as an elementary student. I can share how, uh, so, you know, some of the crises our family went through and how that affected me. I can share about when I came back on track fully, gave myself completely to the Lord at 20. There's all these little hows in there and all these little stories where the gospel intersects. So share your how, write it out in a few sentences, what happened, what was going on. And in that, how is the gospel contained in that story? Make sure it's there. The last couple of micro evangelism trainings have been walking through our story, the, the before and the how, and today we look at the now. Since you came to faith, you know, you've moved from that before stage where there's things in your life that people can relate to, where uh, something was unsettled, that move you to the how, you did some things, some things happened in you and mechanically, in a sense, physically, where you maybe went forward like I did or something, how you came to faith, the gospel's there, and then we come to the now part of your story. And the now part of your story is the difference that Jesus Christ has made and is making in your life right now. There is probably an immediate, you know, now after you're, you're, you're coming to faith. For me, once I realized that coming to Christ as I did uh, made me acceptable to him, that he accepted me, that, that his death applied to me, there was a relief from the fear of death. The fear of death is is absent in my life effectively uh, from that time forward. 
when I gave myself completely to the Lord at the age of 20, where I wrestled through and again, it was as much him dragging me to him as me giving myself to him. Let's be honest about that, that he just, you know, one way or the other, it seems he pulls an apostle Paul on us or a Saul to Paul where he knocks us off our horse and just gets our attention. But, but at that point, uh, you know, since then, the now is that I am satisfied <laughs> Uh, with with life, I am satisfied with my direction, my trajectory. I have a peace and a calm. I have a sense of purpose. And it's no longer really, it's no longer just about me, which really it was uh, before, before I gave my life back completely to him. So in your now, just share how Jesus is helping you today. You can share about how now when you worry, you pray and or maybe ha have people pray for you. You can even share sometimes about Christian community, how other believers help you and have helped you. Maybe you have a testimony of healing or provision or answered prayer, but something that is making a difference in your life now and, and share that. And again, there may be some micro hooks in your now as well. Some things you're experiencing that the person you're sharing your story with wants to experience and it's wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ. So the gospel shows up throughout your story, shows up by its absence in some way in the before, certainly shows up in the how in terms of what you believe and do, the response of repentance and faith following a baptism. And it shows up in the now in that Jesus is relevant and active in our life today. So think it through, write it out, be really clear in your before, how, and now, and you are really equipped to begin to share the gospel in a very relational way with anyone you have the opportunity to do so. All right, again, before you move on, take some time right now, if you haven't done it already, to write out your story. Three minutes, your story, before, how, now, with some of those hooks that God will use from your life to reach your friends.